in the heart of a vast, unforgiving desert, amidst the searing sands and scorching sun, a young girl named Sakina bint Hussein found herself in the throes of unimaginable tragedy. The gentle breeze that once whispered sweet lullabies to her had turned into a cruel, mocking wind that carried the echoes of grief and sorrow. Sakina, the beloved daughter of Hussein ibn Ali, had always known a life of warmth, love, and security. But on this day, under the relentless sun of Karbala, her world was shattered, and her innocent eyes were forced to witness the depths of human cruelty. Sakina was only four years old, a tender age where the world should have been a place of wonder and joy. Her laughter was a melody that brought smiles to the faces of her family, especially her father, Hussein. He cherished her dearly, often lifting her into his arms, spinning her around as her giggles filled the air with pure, unadulterated happiness. To Sakina, her father was a hero, a source of unending love and strength. But on this day, the very foundation of her young life was being ripped apart. The sands of Karbala were stained with the blood of the martyrs, the cries of the wounded mingling with the weeping of the living. Sakina's small hands clung to the tattered fabric of her father's cloak as he stood resolute, facing the overwhelming forces of Yazid ibn Muawiyah. She could not understand the full gravity of the situation, but she sensed the fear and despair in the air. Her wide, innocent eyes looked up at her father, searching for reassurance, but all she found was a sorrowful smile that spoke volumes of unspoken pain. As the battle raged on, the scene became more chaotic and harrowing. Sakina was pulled back into the safety of the tents by her aunts and other women of the family. But no place was safe. The air was filled with the deafening sounds of clashing swords, anguished cries, and the relentless screams of battle. Each noise pierced her heart like a dagger, and she longed for the comfort of her father's arms. In the midst of this chaos, the unthinkable happened. Hussein, the beacon of hope and righteousness, fell to the merciless onslaught of Yazid's forces. The news spread like wildfire through the camp, and a collective wail of despair rose from the women and children. Sakina, not fully grasping the reality of death, clung to the hope that her father would return to her. She called out for him, her voice a heartbreaking plea that echoed in the desolate desert. Baba! Baba, where are you? Her search for her father led her to the battlefield, a sight that no child should ever witness. Her small feet stumbled over the fallen, her eyes wide with horror at the lifeless bodies strewn across the sand. Finally, she found him. Hussein lay motionless, his noble face marred by the brutality he had endured. Sakina's tiny hands reached out to touch his cold, lifeless face her tears mingling with the blood that stained the ground. She could not understand why he wouldn't wake up, why he wouldn't open his eyes and smile at her like he always did. In her innocent mind, she thought perhaps he was just sleeping. She lay beside him, her head resting on his chest, hoping that her presence would bring him back. But there was no heartbeat, no rise and fall of his chest, only the cold, stark reality of death. The night fell and the once vibrant camp was now a scene of utter desolation and despair. The women and children huddled together, their cries and sobs the only sounds in the oppressive silence. Sakina's grief was profound, a raw and unfiltered expression of a child's incomprehension of loss. She refused to leave her father's side, her small body trembling with the cold of the desert night and the overwhelming sorrow that consumed her. Eventually, the survivors were rounded up by Yazid's soldiers, their ordeal far from over. The journey to Kufa and then Damascus was grueling, filled with humiliation and suffering. Sakina's once bright eyes grew dull with the weight of her grief, her spirit crushed by the relentless cruelty of their captors. As they marched, Sakina would often look back, as if hoping to see her father coming to rescue her. Her frail body struggled to keep up, and she would stumble and fall, only to be dragged to her feet by the harsh hands of the soldiers. 
Every night she cried herself to sleep, clutching a small piece of her father's torn cloak that she had managed to keep. It was her only connection to the life and love she had lost. In the dungeons of Damascus, the suffering continued. The harsh conditions, the lack of food and water, and the constant torment by their captors took a severe toll on the young girl. Sakina's health deteriorated rapidly, her once rosy cheeks now pale and gaunt. Her voice, once filled with laughter and joy, became a faint whisper. She would often call out for her father in her sleep, her dreams filled with the memories of a happier time. One fateful night, as the moon cast a ghostly glow over the dungeon, Sakina's frail body finally succumbed to the relentless suffering. Her spirit, so innocent and pure, could no longer endure the agony of this world. She closed her eyes for the last time, a faint smile on her lips as she dreamt of being reunited with her father. In the cold, dark cell, her small body lay still, her suffering finally at an end. The news of Sakina's death spread through the dungeon, and a profound silence fell over the captives. The women wept for the loss of the innocent child who had borne more suffering than most could imagine. Sakina's short life was a testament to the innocent victims of Karbala, a symbol of the purity and resilience that even the greatest cruelty could not destroy. As dawn broke over Damascus, the sun's rays filtered through the bars of the dungeon, casting a gentle light on Sakina's still form. Her suffering was over, but the memory of her pain and innocence would live on in the hearts of all who had witnessed the tragedy of Karbala. The story of Sakina bint Hussein, the innocent child who lost everything in the sands of Karbala, would forever be a poignant reminder of the cruelty of war and the enduring strength of a child's love for her father.